do you know about disinterested contemplation? Let's talk about it. Food tastes different when you're hungry. If you're really hungry, you ravenously eat a thing and you might not get time to like fully in a sophisticated intellectual erudite way, like appreciate the nuances of the flavor. But on the flip side, you might also like enjoy it more because you're hungry and it's more satisfying. The philosopher Immanuel Kant, who you probably have heard of, in his book on aesthetics, talks about disinterested contemplation. The only way to really know whether or not an apple tastes good, according to Kant, is to eat one when you're not hungry. And then, like, really pay attention to the flavors and shit. When I was younger, I was really on board with this way of thinking because I lived in a world where objectivity reigns supreme, subjectivity... We've been talking about this for, like, the last six videos. I guess I shouldn't gloss over it. In the last videos, we've been talking about how often the people who are claiming that you need a more objective perspective are in fact just trying to hide the fact that they live in a subjective, privileged position of perception. And so they're saying, well, be more objective. Don't bring your emotions into this. They're just saying, I don't want to listen to your pain, which is a dereliction of epistemic duty if there ever was one. But back to the apple. On this channel, we've been talking a lot about the book Braiding Sweetgrass by Robin Wall Kimmerer. And it's taught me a lot of things, but one of the things that it taught me is that we exist in ecosystems. We don't survive alone as a species. We survive in a relational way. We survive together. So while Kant might say that if you are too hungry, you don't properly taste the apple, we can reframe that in thinking of it in terms of ecosystem. Because part of why fruit exists in the first place is to be tasty to hungry creatures. So perhaps from a relational perspective, from an ecosystem perspective, instead of a disinterested objective perspective, someone who's hungry tastes the apple better. And the application of this is more important than you might think. One of the repeated choruses during the Black Lives Matter movement was that for some reason or another, people were protesting wrong. They were too emotional, they were too this, they were too that, they were not enough this, not enough that. A lot of these critiques of these protesters took the form of saying, you are too emotional. My friend and colleague Laura Danger talks about this a lot in regard to gender relationships, because often men criticize women as being too emotional. Where Kant says, if you're too hungry, you can't taste the apple. Men say, if you're too emotional, you must be wrong about the thing that you're criticizing me for. In case it's not clear, this is incorrect. Just like the sweetness of the apple is evolved in relationship to a hungry person, anger is not something that degrades an argument when lives are on the line. It's part of what anger is for. And we shouldn't contemplate other people's anger with disinterested objectivity, but empathy instead.